Learning from Nature, the Echinoid Strategy to Design a Lightweight and Resistant Shell Structure. This work aims at exploring the mechanical design of echinoids, commonly known as sea urchins, in order to realize new lightweight shell structures able to withstand diverse loading conditions, mainly by membrane actions and limited bending stresses. It is a biomimetic research carried out by our interdisciplinary team of engineers, biologists and designers. The term biomimetics identifies a learning from nature approach that combines the understanding of biological models, systems and processes together with their abstraction and translation into technological applications. Biomimetics is neither an imitation of nature nor a mere copy of forms, but rather it is an in-depth comprehension and translation of working principles selected by nature over millions of years of evolution. These principles can optimize structures in building constructions as well as in other different technical sectors. Following the biomimetic process, the present research used echinoids as biological models. In particular, the skeletal structure of the common sea urchin Paracentratus lividus, which is defined as a test, was deeply investigated by means of visual survey, photogrammetry, 3D modeling, three-point bending tests and finite element analysis. The understanding of the mechanical principles led to the acquisition of new functional strategies that have been abstracted, contextualized and technologically transferred to the designing of a new bi-inspired shell. Specimens of P. lividus were deeply analyzed at both macro and micro scale to obtain important information regarding the structural design of the test, identifying the functional characteristics that might influence its mechanical behavior. At the micro scale, the test is visibly divided into several hexagonal plates arranged in 10 double columns of alternated 5 embolocral and 5 interembolocral zones. The embolocral plates are distinguished by the presence of pores for the tube feed immersion that are small tube like projections used for moving, feeding, and respiration. The test is also ornamented by a series of tubercles that represent an articulation surface for spines and pedicellari. At the microscale, scanning electron microscope surveys on Pilividus tests showed the high structural variation within the plates. As visible in the vertical section on the right, the skeletal material tends to increase in density in different regions such as the top of the tubercles and the basal zone. Moreover, its microstructure specializes in the zones more subjected to directional forces, such as the sutural ones, that correspond to the area of connection between the plates. The microstructure at the sutures is characterized by a regular porous arrangement typical of the gallery dysterium. These structures are geometrically ordered and regularly oriented according to the direction of the junction. The suture area ends with the spherical protrusions, the finger joints, that allow the interlocking between the complementary plates. Furthermore, the plates at the sutures are connected by short sutural collagen fibers. The visual survey highlighted different functional features, which contribute to the stability of the echinoid structure and might influence its mechanical behavior. These features are arrangement, plate curvature and sutures. In the echinoid test, the plates are arranged following the trivalent vertex principle, in which three plates meet in one point, allowing the transmission of normal and shear forces, but not the bending moments between the joints. As shown by Wester, the subdivision in different plates and their arrangement in trivalent vertex provides stability to the test, as occurs in the panel structure. Interestingly, Wester describes and compares the dualistic nature of the panel structure with the pure lattice that can be found in organisms like diatoms and radiolaria. 
They are both stable configurations, however, while pure lattice action is based on the axial forces acting along the bars and transferred at nodes, pure plate action is based on the membrane stresses carried by the plates and delivered by cylindrical hinges positioned along the intersection lines between plates. Three lines of support are necessary to stabilize a plate in a 3D space. Consequently, the characteristic pattern of a pure plate action is the trivalent vertex, which is dual to the triangular mesh typical of lattice structures. In the echinoid test, the plates are joined together in a partially flexible way at the edges, with the possibility of rotation mechanism as a result, as visible in the upper left side of the slide. However, the global mechanism is avoided both by specific arrangement of plates, as shown in the previous slide, and by the curved geometry of the intersection lines. Curved hinges avoid rotation mechanisms even with the only one line of support per plate, avoiding the transfer of bending actions. Additionally, sutures are characterized by the presence of interdigitating articular surfaces, the finger joints, and are bound together by collagenous ligaments. The finger joints at the microstructure can prevent shear movements between the plates and the collagen provides the test some degree of flexibility. We analyzed the mechanical behavior of plates and sutures plate-plate system by means of three-point bending tests. These tests have been used to calibrate the parameters that characterize the sutural behavior. Results of our tests have shown a peculiar behavior of the plate-plate systems. While single plates behave linearly until rupture, plate-plate systems allow a limited relative rotation between the plates. In particular, suture exhibit a very flexible bending behavior when rotations are small. Successively, when rotations become larger, the stiffness of these joint systems hardens and limits the final mechanism. This behavior allows each pair of plates to bear the applied load as a rigid system and increases the global strength of the plated shell. In order to explain the hardening behavior of sutures, we developed a mechanical interpretative model in which the arrangement of skeletal fingers is employed both to avoid shear mechanisms and to produce an interlocking effect that restricts the allowed rotation. However, we emphasize that more investigations are needed in order to confirm our interpretation. This preliminary analysis raised the following question. How do sutures influence the mechanical behavior of a discontinuous shell structure? For this purpose, we set up a digital model of the echinoid test and analyzed it using the finite element method. The geometry of the skeletal structure has been obtained by means of a photogrammetric survey. This geometry has been regularized by employing a parameterized description and then divided into plates and sutures in order to separate the regions with different structural behavior. Both the geometric entities were modeled by a mesh of quadrilateral finite elements, thus obtaining the geometric basis of a finite element model. Starting from this unique geometry, two different models were obtained, a monolithic and a segmented model. They differentiate each other for the way sutures are modeled. In particular, the monolithic model was obtained by assigning the same material properties to both plates and sutures, while the segmented model is characterized by reduced flexural stiffness of the elements corresponding to collagenous sutures. Several analyses were conducted on both the monolithic and segmented models, considering different loading conditions that correspond to normal and tangential loads, applied to a portion of the test. 
In the lower left side of this slide, we show the contour plots of the bending stresses generated by a normal load applied to the circular portion of the structure. As clearly visible, the segmented model exhibits a significant reduction of bending actions with respect to the monolithic one. These analyses have provided important knowledge about the mechanical design of the test and the biological principles behind it. The global mechanism of the test is avoided by the trivalent vertex arrangement, curved edges and the interlocking among plates, whereas the flexible sutures were identified as a functional biological principle to reduce bending stresses. This knowledge was abstracted as a bio-inspired solution for designing a new type of shell structure. The echinoid strategy was abstracted and applied to design a new generic shell characterized by a discontinuous structure composed of rigid hexagonal modules with curved edges and flexible joints arranged by following the trivalent vertex principle. This concept was transferred to a plexiglass open shell conceived as a space divider structure for exhibition and fair events in the after-Covid scenario. The designed shell was analyzed considering gravity, wind, anthropic and seismic actions. In this slide, the bending stresses generated by gravity load in monolithic and segmented models are compared. From these two illustrations, it is clear that the presence of flexible joints reduces significantly the maximum value of the bending stresses within the shell structure. In conclusion, based on numerical and experimental comparisons carried out on the test of Paracentrotus lividus, the beneficial effect associated with the presence of collagenous sutures was verified. The presence of flexible joints is associated with reduced bending stresses within the echinoid test. This structural behavior can be abstracted and emulated in building engineering and led to the design of a new shell structure conceived as a space divider for exhibitions and fair events according to the latest emerging needs in the after-Covid scenario.